If you have your Bibles with you today, let's turn to Matthew 16. We're going to pinpoint on verses 14 through 19. Matthew chapter 16, and we're going to pinpoint on the verses 14 through 19. And you can stand for the reading of the word, sit, or however your tradition uh, uh, allows you to do so. And the passage reads, it's this. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say that you are Elisha. And others say that you are Jeremiah's or, or one of the prophets. And he looked at his disciples and said, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus turned and looked at him and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon or Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which art unto heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will say that again. And he looked at Peter and he said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And he said, I will give unto thee the keys. Amen. I will give unto, unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou loose on earth shall be loose in heaven this is the word of God for the people of God thanks be unto God you all can be seated in the presence of the Lord Amen. help me Holy Ghost the title of my message today is simply Lord help me find my keys Lord, help me find my keys. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word. I thank you for this moment. I remove Vance out of the way, Father God, for I understand that I can't do this without you. I need your strength. I need your might. But most importantly, I need your Holy Spirit. Let those who came seeking a word, let their needs be met. Let those who came seeking understanding, let their needs be met. Whatever the needs are in this place, let their needs be met. For I am relying on you and I'm trusting on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. One day this week, I was on my way to work. And I grabbed all of my things and I walked out of the house only to get to my car and I realized that I didn't have my keys. I think to myself, well, I can't unlock my car doors and I can't even crank my car up because I don't have my keys. My hands were filled and I'm forced to lay down all of these bags, my boot bag and all of these stuff only to realize that I didn't even lock the door in the first place where I'm staying because I'm on my way to work and I don't want to be late. And anyone who knows anything about me, one of my pet peeves is I hate being late. I hate tardiness. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. Like, I love to be on time. I don't like to miss work. I, I, don't, I don't like to be late. So now I'm in a panic mode because I can't find my keys. So I search under the couch. I backtrack. I look in the bathroom. I looked in the kitchen. I looked in all of the cabinets. I look high and low. I look here and there. I looked a little bit of everywhere because I'm trying to find my keys. I look for 15 minutes. 15 minutes goes by. I search for 30 minutes. And here I am. I've wasted so much time because I can't find my keys. And at this point, I'm, I'm late for work, so I'm feeling some kind of way because I don't like being late. Tardiness is a big deal to me. I don't like being late. 
I'm missing valuable time where I could be serving our school, serving our community, helping teachers out, helping our students. But I'm not able to do so because I can't find my keys. And in that moment, God started to minister to me about keys. Keys are important. Without keys, you are basically stuck when it comes to moving forward. Without keys, you are stuck when it comes to getting to where you need to be on time. Without keys, you won't have the access that you need to get into the door that you need to be in. Without keys, there's no way to be able to protect what's rightfully yours. Without keys, you can be bound up, you can be locked up, you can be chained in situations that you don't even want to be in because keys in life are important. Every door, every blessing, every opportunity, and all that God has in store for you, it will require you having some keys. Amen. There's a key to your happiness. There's a key to your joy. There's a key for your peace. There's a key for your Restoration. There's a key for whatever it is that you believe in God for, but it all depends on what team you own and what set of keys you have. Some of you all have had some stuff that's been locked up for a long time, but I come with good news today. Is that the things that's been locked up, we have the keys. The things that has been uh, locked away from you, we have the keys. The things that you've been believing God for, we have the keys. The things that you want to see happen in your life, the things that you've been praying for, we have the keys. Today is the day to unlock that door that you've been praying for. Today is the day to unlock the things that you been believing God for the revelation that word of God has been locked up in the heavenly realm to help you get from here to there to your next level we have the keys Amen. this day in the name of Jesus Amen. everything that you need is in the kingdom of God you just need the keys and you got to be on the right team you got to have the right keys because wrong keys don't unlock right doors. Amen. Wrong keys don't unlock right opportunity. Ooh. Wrong keys don't unlock blessings with your name on it. Wrong keys don't bring you that husband, that wife, or that soulmate. Wrong keys don't put you in the right places at all of the right time. Amen. It depends on what team you own and what set of keys you have. Amen. What you are believing God for, you got to have the keys to the kingdom and not and not the keys to the world. Come on. What God has in store for you is locked up in the kingdom of God and can't be found in the world. That's right. Come on. When I say the kingdom of God, it simply means God's way of doing things. Amen. There's no keys for happiness in the world system. Amen. There's no keys for joy in the world system. There's no keys for peace in the world system. As Jesus said in John 14 and 27 that peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you not as the world giveth. There's no way that you can receive kingdom blessings being outside of the will of God. There's no way that you can receive what God says and the doors that God wants to open for you being outside of God's will and God's way. There's no way for you to open up the doors that has been locked up, the doors that has been shut, the chains that has locked you down, the chains that needs to be opened and broken without being in God's will. It requires having the keys and being on the right team. Amen. 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 Now let me deal with this text. Now as we take a look at this text, we have Jesus who is doing unorthodox things. Jesus is going around. He's healing. Jesus is delivering. Jesus is setting the captive free to a point where he's gaining more power than the Roman government. He's gaining more power than those who are in political uh, uh, positions to a point where he has the keys to power in his hands. When Jesus has so much influence because he is the anointed one. He is the Messiah. He's the one who 
who's been prophesied by the prophet Isaiah. He is the chosen one. But with so much power, there is a lot of questions from the Pharisees and the Sadducees about who this Jesus guy really is. Jesus is so close to so many, but there's no indication of who Jesus really is to the point where the people started to wonder about Jesus. They started to wonder who gave Jesus this authority. They started to wonder who sent Jesus. They tried to, they tried to wonder how does Jesus have so much power to a point where people are confused about his authority and who sent him. And it's the same way with you all. When God has anointed and appointed you, when God's hand has been upon your life, when God has given you influence on the job, when God has given you influence in the community, and God has given you favor everywhere you go, people begin to wonder about you. People begin to think about you. As the Bible says in Psalm 71 and verse number 7, where David says, I am a wonder unto many. Because of God's anointing, you become a wonder to many, to a point where people say, I wonder how she got that job. I wonder how he got that position. I wonder how they got that house. I wonder this. I wonder that. You are a wonder to many because God continued to do things in your life that's uncommon to man What people say, I wonder about you. I wonder about her. I wonder about them. And I wonder how they do this and how they do that. But with all of their wondering, they want to know who or where or what authority has given you the influence. Who has given you the power that you have? Who has put you in that position? And at that point when people started to ask you all of those nosy questions, trying to get all up in your business, trying to count all of your pockets, yeah. that's an opportunity where you can turn the glory from yourself and turn the glory over to God. Where you are able to say, I am who I am because of the power of God. I can't ever take the credit because yeah. I give the credit to our yeah. Lord and Savior. I can't take all of the glory. I can't take all of the praise. I am who I am because of the power of God. And it's because God sent me. I am who I am because God sent me. You might not like it, but God sent me. You might not be feeling it in your heart, but God sent me. And we give him all of the honor, glory, and praise. Because when you are truly sick by God, when God has truly given you an assignment, when you are truly in God's will, people will try to question your authority. Yes. Come on, man. And when people try to question your authority, just look in the mirror and tell yourself, the Lord sent me. Yes. When people try to compare and contrast you, yes. just look in the mirror and say, the Lord sent me. Amen. When people try to question your heart, just look in the mirror and say, the Lord sent me. Because whenever God sends you on an assignment, when God takes you higher on the totem pole, when God gives you a raise, people will try to question your authenticity. People will try to question your authority. People will try to wonder, how did she get that position? How he got that position? Up in this position because the Lord sent me, amen. Amen. Because people will hate what they can't understand. People will despise what they can't articulate. And that's not your business. That's between them and God. <laughs> that's between them and God. Because whatever God sends you to, God will send you through. Whatever God leads you to, God will always provide. To a point where they question who Jesus was. Some wonder if he was John the Baptist. The text says some wonder if he was Elisha. The text says that some wonder was he Jeremiah. The text in the Bible that you're reading it says that they wonder was he some great prophet. And Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, I know what man is saying, but who do you say I am? It's not about what other people say, but who do you say I am? It's not 
what grandmama say about Jesus. Who do you say Jesus is? It's not about what the Pharisees say. It's not about what the scribes say. Who is Jesus to you? It's not what your professor said at DBU about Jesus. It's about who do you say Jesus is? Because who Jesus is to me, he might not be the same thing to you. But I don't know about you, but I know Jesus to be a way maker. I know Jesus to be a healer. I know Jesus to be a restorer. I know Jesus to be able to make a way out of no way what Jesus is to you he might not be the same to me yes. Come on, brother. Amen. Come he on. said but who do you say I am and that leads me to my first point getting close to God requires intimacy yes. getting close to God it requires intimacy what do you mean Pastor Vance let me help you cause see before Jesus gave Simon Peter's the keys. He asked them, who do you say that I am? Who I know Jesus as might not be who you see Jesus as. We see Jesus according to our personal encounter with Jesus. There are so many people who in this text is close to Jesus, but they still don't know who Jesus really is. There are so many people who knows of Jesus, but they don't know who Jesus is personally. There's plenty of people who are close to you, but they don't know who you are personally. And because you know of someone doesn't mean that they know you on a personal level. To get to know someone, it requires you spending time with them. To get to know them. And it's the same with God. In order to get to know him on a personal level, it requires spending time with him, getting to know him. And Jesus has handpicked disciples, people who saw his works, people who saw his miracles, and they still are asking for a sign. They still don't know who he is. They still are praying for a vision. They've been so close to Jesus and they still don't know who he is. And churches are filled all across America where people carry the title Christian, but there's nothing Christ-like about them. Because they really don't know who Jesus is. Right. Churches are filled all across America where people know of Jesus, but they don't know Jesus personally. There are people who know the theatrics of church. They know how to sing on the choir. Yeah. They know how to look, have a form of godliness on the first row, on the front row, shaking their hands, yeah. having a form of godliness, yeah. but denying the power thereof. But they still don't know Jesus. There are people who can quote. Inside and out, but they still don't know Jesus. And there's denominations that think they are better than other denominations. And all of that stuff, all it does is divide us as a people. It divides us because of their views on how they treat women. It divides us. Because the way that they look at other races, other ethnicities, other communities, black people, white people, LGBTQ com community, it divides us. And there's no way you can call yourself a child of God when you don't treat your brothers and your sisters wrong. It only causes confusion. When people won't know who Jesus really is because there's so many things to divide us. When people don't know who Jesus really is because so-called Christians has done so much of a bad job representing their Christ. Amen. To a point in this text where the people don't even know who Jesus is. He's handpicked hand people and they don't even know who Jesus is. All of these people are all around him and they still don't know who he is. The Pharisees and Sadducees, people in position, don't be so close to Jesus when you don't know who he is. 
and getting close to Jesus, it requires you being intimate with God to be able to get to know him on a personal level. Getting close to God requires intimacy so, intimacy so you can learn about God and grow where God is shaping and molding your heart so that you can be who God has called you to be. Don't be so close to God where you don't get to know him on a personal level. Be intentional about spending time with God in prayer. Be intentional with getting in your word on a daily basis. Be intentional about the things of God to a point where you are hungry to be intimate with God. Yes, sir. And there's no greater tragedy in this land than to go to church Sunday after Sunday, year after year, and still live a life of defeat. There's no greater tragedy than to know that God can do this and the Bible says that he can do this and you still live a life of defeat. There's no greater tragedy than to come to church and to be so close to Jesus and not receive the things that God said that you can have in this world. There's no greater tragedy than to know of God but not to know him personally. Amen. There's no greater tragedy than to know that God has something for you, but it stays locked up when you never find the keys yes. uh -huh. to receive it because you never took the time to actually get intimate with God to be able to know him. But Simon Peter, he knew who Jesus was because he was so close to Jesus. He was so close to him. When Jesus said, well, who do you say that I am. And Jesus and Simon Peter said that you are the Christ. You are the chosen one. You are truly the Messiah. He knew what others didn't know because he was close enough to Jesus in an intimate way to get revelation of who God is. Jesus didn't die so we could have powerless religion. Jesus died so we can have intimate relationship. Jesus didn't die so we could have powerless religion. Jesus died so we can have an intimate relationship with him. Jesus died so we can have a deep, intimate relationship with God. Because religion teaches about God, but intimacy teaches you about who God really is. And that leads me to my second point. Revelation and power, it comes with being intimate with God. Revelation and power from God comes with intimacy with God. Now, if you take a look at verse number 17, Jesus replied to Simon Peter and looked him in the face and said, Flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. But my Father in heaven has revealed this to him. He looked at Simon Peter and said, Flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. But through my spirit, through my might, through my power, you got the revelation of who I really am because knowing the Bible with head knowledge is not enough. Come on, knowing Amen. Jesus with head knowledge Amen. is not enough. For there are devils who know about Jesus. There are evil people who know about Jesus. There are evil people who know the Bible inside and out better than you do and better than I do. That doesn't mean that they know Jesus personally. Even demons know who Jesus are as the seven sons of Sceva couldn't cast out the demons because they didn't have no power and they didn't have a true revelation of who God was. The text says in Acts 19 to 15 the demons looked at them and said that evil spirit answered and said Jesus I know and Paul I know but who are you? Because you don't have no power. You don't have no authority and you truly don't know who God is. And everyone want to have power, but don't nobody want to put in the devotional time to get close to God to get the power that they need. You need power to overcome the tricks of the enemy. You need power to overcome the evil devices. You need power to be victorious in this world. You need the power to live and to overcome. You 
need power to be able to trend upon serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. But power comes with spending time with God in prayer. As there's a saying that says, much prayer equals much power, but there's no prayer, there's no power. There's also a, a saying that says, seven days without prayer equals one week. In order to have the power to overcome all adversity, to overcome all the life challenges, to be able to have the power to, to, to trend on the serpents and scorpions and all of the evil devices of the enemy, it will require spending time with the Lord in prayer. But not just with prayer alone. It also requires the word of God. Amen. It requires the word of God. Absolutely. Jesus told Simon that upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The church shall be built on prayer and the word of God. Your life should be built around prayer and the word of God. Your career shall be Amen. built around Amen. prayer and the word of God. Amen. Your family need to be built around Amen. prayer and the word of God. That when the enemy try to throw his best shot at you, when the enemy try to take his best shot at you and take you down, when the enemy tries to destroy you and your dream, remember, a punch us rock. Yes. I will build my church yes. and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He's talking about the word of God upon this rock. He's talking about the word that doesn't bend. Upon this rock, he's talking about the word that doesn't break. Upon this rock, he's talking about the word of God that's infallible. Upon this rock, he's talking about the word that never return for upon this rock. He's talking about I will build my church and the gates of hell. Come on, brother. Shall not prevail against it. And there are some situations in life that you will be in that will look like there's no way out. There are some situations in life where it will look like there's nowhere to go. And the only way to get out of that situation will require a revelation and a word from God that flesh and blood can't get you out of that situation. It will require a God revelation. You will be faced with situations in life that look like there's no way out where it will require you getting so intimate with God in prayer so that God can unlock a resolution, so God can unlock a solution, so that God can give you more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding yeah. on how to get out of that situation, how to get from having my back pinned against the wall, how to get my bills paid, yeah. how do I get from here and there where flesh and blood can't reveal it to you, but it's only by the Spirit of God and being yeah. intimate with God. And getting Amen. to know him so that a word or an, an instruction that has been locked up in heaven that you get the keys to be able to unlock that word where you able to get the keys to be able to unlock that instruction to be able Amen. to get the keys to give you something that will get you out of your situation. Amen. Come on, come on. Simon Peter, flesh and blood, then reveal it to you. No. Who told you that? Where did you get that from? Yeah. But being close to God brings about kingdom revelation. Yes, yes, yes. And in order to get, you will find yourself in a jam in life where your back is pinned against the wall. Where head knowledge of who Jesus is, head knowledge of the word of God won't get you out of that situation. Oh, it will no. require a word from God, a revelation yes. that comes with being close to God. Amen. Amen. Here's my third and final point. I would be y'all about this close, but we don't have a musician, so... This is my celebration point. Trust, trust, trust from God comes with being intimate with God. Trust from God comes with intimacy. You got it to the scholars who take notes. My third and final point. Trust from God comes with being intimate with God. You see, keys are so important that in order to get keys from someone, you have to be close to someone to 
get their keys Amen. to their valuable possessions. You got to know someone intimately in order to get their keys. You don't just give people the keys to your car. You don't just give people the keys to your house. You don't just give your keys to your valuable possessions to anybody. You don't just give your keys to just some Tom, Dick, or Harry because keys are important. You give your keys to somebody that you know personally and to someone that you trust. You don't give your keys to somebody you ain't feeling in your heart. You don't give your keys to somebody you don't know. You give your keys and your valuable possessions to somebody you trust because Simon Peter was so close to Jesus because Peter was so intimate with Jesus because Peter knew Jesus on a personal uh, basis. Jesus said, I'm going to give you my keys. I'm going to turn my keys over and in life you got to have the right keys and there's no greater set of keys than having keys that come from Jesus. There's no greater set of keys than having keys that come from Jesus. You have been praying for power, but guess what? I got the keys. You been praying for a breakthrough, but guess what? I got the keys. You been praying for God to make a way out of nowhere, but guess what? I got the keys. Yes, yes, yes. He said, I'm going to give you the keys. You've been praying that God turn your situation around. Yes. I got the keys. Yes. And he said, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. The whatsoever yes. you bind on earth yes. shall be bound yes. in heaven. Yes. I'm going to give you the keys yes. Yes. to the kingdom of heaven. That yes. whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven yes. because you are my friend. I'm going to transfer my keys over to you and put my keys in your hand that whatsoever you bind on earth yes. shall be bound in heaven. Yes. Jesus has given you the keys to the kingdom yes. that whatsoever belong to the Father you now have access to yes. because you have the keys. Whatever God has promised you, you now have access to because you have the keys. Whatever God has shown you in a vision, you now have access to it because you have the keys. Yes. Whatever someone has prophesied over your life, you now have access to because you now have the keys. As the Bible says, on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. On earth as it is in heaven yes. because you have the keys. Yes. But you got to use the keys. Unlock your happiness because you got the keys. Unlock your joy because you have the keys. Unlock your healing because you have the keys. Unlock your breakthrough because you have the keys. Unlock the very thing that's been locked up in the heavenly realm that you've been praying for year after year. Unlock it. Yes. Yes. In the name of Jesus, because you got the keys that Amen. whatsoever is bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. I bind the spirit of fear yes. in the name of yes. Jesus. I bind that spirit of depression in the name of Jesus. I bind that spirit of hurt in the name of Jesus. I bind that spirit of death in the name of Jesus. I bind that spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus. I bind that evil satanic force that has come to kill, steal, and destroy because Jesus said, I've given you the keys to the kingdom of heaven that whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. you being stressed out and burned out all the time in the name of Jesus. Because I got the keys. I bind that spirit of confusion in the name of Jesus. Because I got the keys. I bind you 
dealing with pornography in the name of Jesus, because I got the keys. I find you've been addicted to all forms of medication, self-medicating yourself, because I got the keys, because he said, Sir Peter, whatsoever you buy on earth shall be bound in heaven, and because I got power, I'm going to relinquish my power, and I'm going to transfer my keys over to you, because you have the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. I'll say that too, Holy Spirit. Somebody said, well, I, I, I've been coming to church. I, I've been reading the word. I know that same scripture too. Okay, I hear you in the spirit. Well, if you had the keys and you ain't seen nothing happen, you need to change your surroundings. If you ain't getting your breakthrough, you ain't get what the Bible says, you need to change the people around you. Amen. Because there's something, a person, place, or thing that's blocking you from receiving what God says you can have. Amen. 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 Come on, brother. Guess what, y'all? I end up finding my keys, though. Thank God. I ended up finding my keys. But I didn't end up finding my keys till I said, okay, I've wasted 15 minutes. I've wasted 30 minutes. I've looked here, I've looked there, I've looked everywhere. I even looked in the cabinet. Because one time I lost my keys, they was behind a, 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 a cornflake box. <laughs> so I had to look in the cabinet. But I didn't find my keys until I sat down. I was being still. And I said, Lord, this situation is beyond my power. This situation is beyond my might. Lord, please help me find my keys. Because I'm late for work. I want to go to work. I don't like being late. And when I was still, and the Lord gave me this whole sermon about keys, the Spirit of the Lord led me to look in between the couch. And I dug my hand deep into the couch. And I found my keys. In the instant I found keys, I had access to be able to lock my door. I had access to be able to go to my car. I had access to the school building. I had access to the church. But see, here's the interesting thing about keys. With any organization, with any uh, 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 building, with, with, with any corporate building or whatever, there's one person who has what we call the master keys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that person who has the master keys, they can get in any door in the building. They can get in any lock in the building. They have access to any place in the building because they have the master keys. And if you don't have your keys or if you can't find your keys, I know a master who holds all of the keys. I know a master who holds the key to your healing. I know a master who holds the key to your deliverance. I know a master who holds the key to your restoration. I know a master who holds the key to your family being whole. I know a master who can deliver you from depression. I know a master. Who holds all of the keys? But you got to get to know him on an intimate basis. Because that's the difference of knowing of the master who holds the keys and knowing him personally. I can know of who owned that building over there, but because I know of whoever the name is on that building, don't give me access to the keys. I go to him and say, let me hold the keys. I'm trying to go in the basement in the garage. He'll look at me like a fool. I don't know you. Who are you? Paul, I know. Jesus, I know, but who are you? You got to know Jesus on an intimate basis, on a personal basis. The word intimacy means a close friend. It means a closeness to be yoked to. And because Simon Peter got the revelation from being close, close. Jesus said, that was keys. 
the doors of the church are open. If you want to meet that master who holds the keys to everything that you believe in God for, it's simple as confessing with your mouth, believing in your heart, 